Hey, hey, everyone. Um, just uh, Matt Anderson again reaching out to you here. Just want to come out here with this podcast and, and just talk again about how, uh, how we can get deal flow. So, so this podcast is going to be about deal flow, which, which is actually one of the number one issues of, of deal makers today. Um, so acquisition entrepreneurs are dead in the water if they have no deal flow and they are only as good as their deal flow. Um, and they're only going to get better with the more deal flow they get because with each deal comes more experience, whether, whether it's, it's learning what to do or what not to do. Right? So let's start out. So where can I find leads? So there, there's a, there's a lot of ways you can find leads. So one, one place you can find leads is, is go to uh, bizbysell.com. And, and I realized in the last segment, I talked about bizbysell. Um, they're one of the largest brokerages for uh, brick and mortar businesses in, online in the world, or at least, well, yeah, in the world. And, um, but they have a section that's actually um, for sell by owner, right? And they'll market and everything, and, and they'll put that out there. They'll market for the individuals, but they'll go to the sellers, and, and they've prepped the sellers and everything. So I wouldn't believe all the numbers because it's more on the seller side. But at the same time, these businesses, um, they're, biz by sale that's involved, I think I think they're called like ABC Consultants or something along those lines, which is a DBA of bizbysell.com that works specifically with the for sale by owners. They're not brokers. They're consultants and what they do is they get paid out a sum that was agreed between them and the seller and that comes from the seller side so what they do is they just introduce you and they let you and the business owner speak they let both decision makers speak they'll there to help out if if needed but uh that that's one way to find to find um businesses to buy um, an, another way is is that you can just search online for businesses for sale by owner. So um, you can do that. I, I found some lists in specific states. California has a list of businesses for sale by owner. Um, you know, there, there's a Utah, Oregon, Washington. Uh, I'm by I'm on the West Coast, so I, that's why these states that I'm mentioning. But uh, Florida, Massachusetts. Uh, you know, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio. And so there's, there's leads there and it's a lot that that's a different type of work and it's going through them and taking out that data and putting it in. So, so where do you find deals? That's, that's where you can find deals. Um, where I love to find deals is it, it recently was called reference USA. Okay. And this is where things get exciting. So, um, Depending on how, how this podcast goes, we might just spend a lot of time on this and cut it short and then do another segment later on. But get out your pens or re-listen to this podcast because this is gold and you do not find this unless you are up and up in mastermind spending 10, 20, 30, or even 100 grand on, on what we're doing to bring in deal flow, right? And so... What you can do is you can go to it's it's called Reference USA, um, but it'll redirect you to what is called Data Axle. Now get this: Data Axle is going to have sixteen, just shy of seventeen million plus businesses that uh, that are that are in its system. Okay, now it's not one hundred percent accurate just like a, a Zoom info, which is great to find businesses also. Um, it's not 100% accurate, just like Dun & Bradstreet. They're as accurate as they can be at this time, but with private businesses, they can they can only get so much information. And you can only get so much information before you actually have to contact the business owner and talk to them and have that conversation, right? And so, so get this, all you need is a library card. So if you're outside the United States, you know, there's ways that you can obtain a library card within a certain state or whatnot. And if you have questions about that, contact me and, and I can help you do that legally, ethically, and morally. Um, 
But if you are a U.S. citizen, get a library card, okay? It might sound cheesy, but having fun isn't hard until you've got your library card, and I'm going to show you why, okay? And so when you have that library card, it's free to sign up. You have access to certain databases that are, that are government paid for, that are funded, and you have access to those. And, and some of them you have unlimited access, and some of them you have a majority access to, to a certain extent. And, and Reference USA is one of those where you have a certain extent of access. Now, follow along with me here. Get your library card. Go to your library's website, or you could do it at the library. You don't have to be at the library with technology. Nowadays, you can do it at your home, and it's a beautiful thing as long as we use technology correctly, right? So go at home, log into your library's website, and go to resources. It's over resources or online or online tools, something along those lines. And when you go there, go to other resources or databases, and, and it, you're going to have a drop down, and it's going to say Reference USA. Click on that. Reference USA is going to redirect you to a website that is called Data Axle. Okay? Data Axle in and of itself is it's it's paid for and it's already funded through government funding that that the library seeks out on its own. And so for you as a member of that library of having that library card, it's free. But to log into the library's website online at home, you have to enter in that library card. Okay, so once you're in Data Axel, you, you can start playing with, with 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 a lot of things, and so that leads me to question number two: How do I create my ideal list? Okay, so now we got to put on a, a, a different hat at this point, no pun intended, and uh, and and with that hat, uh, you know, you're you're looking at how do you create your ideal lead? Well, what do you want to look for? Okay. So let's just let's just start out with what the average is, okay? With acquiring, with business buying, and acquiring businesses. So you are you find a business that's a million dollars, okay? So a million dollar range. So it's like, okay, what is everything that we want in a business? So let's say that it's grossing a million, okay? And let's say that um, you want some sort of process in play, meaning that. If, if the business is streamlined more that you as a business owner can go on more vacations and the business is going to run as normal, right? It's not, it doesn't sink or soar on whether you're present or not. So what we usually say is that you want at least eight plus employees in that business. So data Axel gives you all, all of these different variables that you can, that you can input or, or, or take out, right? So I want a business that's a million dollars gross. I want a business that has at least I'll just put 10 plus employees. I want a business that, you know, you can search in different industries of, uh, you know, of, of businesses, different verticals. And, and I'll do another segment strictly on the searching and data axle that we can get into that uh, it, it gets very, it gets very exciting. But for all the points and purposes in, in this, in this podcast, pick the vertical that you want, that you want to go in, right? Whether it's manufacturing <clears throat> plumbing, service-oriented businesses, whatever that may be. Now, in the last segment, we did talk about a platform-type business that you would like to acquire to do bolt-ons and, and roll up different companies to, to um, either either fill out uh, your, your, your what would be a um, – oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, losing, I'm losing my mind here. What, what would be you know, where you source, kind of that, that line there, or, or you can fill out horizontally and start buying up competitors, right? Or, or or vertically getting your supply chain. That's the word I was looking for, is filling out that supply chain. Now, you're creating your ideal your ideal list of leads, your ideal list there of, of the businesses you want to target. So million dollars in gross revenue, 10 plus employees, um, which, which ensures that there's some type of system in place. You can say you want it nationally, or you can say, Hey, I want to, I want to segment it uh, according to geography, right. And where, where they're located. So I just want the Midwest. Um, and, and data Axel, just so you know, it's, it's only in the U S just to reiterate here, U S and Canada. Um, and, and then you can continue going down that list. Now, what's fun is, is there's two different ways you can go about this. You can upgrade to Data Axle Genie, and you can say, "Hey, I'm going to pay $200 a month, 
and I am going to get, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to get access to emails. And let's say I think they give about 1,200 emails a month or, or something along those lines. And so you're going down different variables, checking, unchecking of how what what your perfect client is and what that looks like. And let's say you get a list of 300 businesses. Okay, and you're like sweet. So you're going, you're scrolling down this, and you're looking at them, and and you're saying, you know what? Um, I want to check businesses that only have email, and I want to, and I want to look at businesses that are that only have their CEO, president, uh, partner, somewhere along those lines where it's the decision maker and and most likely sole owner or or a majority owner of the business, right? And so there's different keywords there. And I want them, and you can check it also to say, I want to see those only that have email addresses, right? So that's the route of paying $200 a month. And, and you have up to 1,200 emails a month and of different different emails. And once you get those, you keep them. They're yours. And, and what you can do is you can simply export that list. Let's say it's 300. And you can email those people and I'll talk about how you can email them. But first let me talk about going the other route of, of keeping it, you know, um, we're bootstrapping this as much as possible. So let's say you don't have the 200 a month to spend, right? So we go the route of, um, okay, I can't select those that have email only because I can't get their email. You know, I don't have access to that, but you have access to all the rest of the business information, right? Um, uh, how much they're gross, uh, who the, who the um, key decision makers are and and, and business website, uh, statistics, description, everything that you need to know to make a, a more um, solid decision of whether you want to move forward or not in next steps with that business. I paid for a version and it was just like 200, I think it was just under $250. It was a one-time fee to have it for life. Super cheap. You can test it out. It gives you 75 emails credits that you can send out 75 for free. Okay, um, but I do this, I pay for this, so it gives me 500 a month um, that I can, or sorry, 500 a month, 500 a day or every 24 hour period that I can send out, but it does it in such a way that it's a buffer that I do not get flagged by Gmail and I fly right under the radar of not spamming people. And so the power behind that, and that doesn't account for the 11 emails I had in my inbox. Now, I think there were one or two that sent an email and a voicemail. Okay, but uh, that being said, having 15 plus business owners reach out to me in one day, and that's that's on the higher end, that doesn't always happen, but that was a second or third email that I had sent out to him. Hey, I didn't hear back from you before, just so you know, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm reaching out, you know, and, and no, them starting to realize, hey, you're a real person versus just trying to spray and pray, you know, and, and find some some people. Uh, then you actually start having conversations with these individuals. So does it, it does it does it take a lot of time? That's another question that we had from the last segment. Yeah, it can, you know, but as you're fine-tuning this process, and that's what we're talking about on these podcasts is what works. Let's fine-tune these processes, right? And some people still, no matter what, say, do it for me. I don't have enough time, but I have money, you know, and we do processes with you and we also do them for you. You know, we have people that, that come out to us that say, hey, specifically, you know, we're working with a pharmaceutical company right now on the West Coast, and they say, hey, we do what we do best. Um, we're preparing to go IPO, but we need help and we need partners and we want to grow through acquisition. So they've hired us to say, hey, they just want to get on the phone with people that are interested in a strategic partnership or, or, or this pharmaceutical company buying them out, right? What does that look like? And so we've been able to do two roll-ups with this company and, and then a third that we're going through the process to do a reverse merge. And a reverse merge is, is it for a company to go IPO or to go public instead of going through all the hoops and everything is they just merge with a company that's already public and then within 30 days they're public themselves, right? Whether they take on the, you know, the name of that company or they're under the umbrella uh, of that company still as a standalone as themselves, right? A DBA. And so... These are things that we're doing and they're super fun projects and, uh, and, and super lucrative payouts. Um, but with that being said, it's just you kind of kind of have to find your niche there. But what we're here to do is we're here to help you out and, and figure that out. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, subscribe, 
Um, but at the same time, contact me. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, I'm on other social medias there. Reach out and I, I try to answer all my emails personally. Thank <laughs> you.